jumping back into some more Craftoria, boy, is today going to be an interesting episode because I'm going to be going through the storage solution mods that are accessible early game, going ahead and kind of taking a look at the broad scope of all of those mods and then determining which one is the best. Well, I've kind of already got that part kind of sorted out, but I do need to explain a few things. Now, as of right now, we are using a very vanilla item storage solution, just placing things in chests and kind of going about our business by pulling the items out and handcrafting them. Now, there's a couple of other solutions to this problem. Uh, for one, I think you can surround a chest or surround chests around a crafting station and then you can access those items from within this crafting station, which is another pretty cool thing that you can do early game. Um, I kind of forwent this, and if you place this here, we should be able to access the inventories here. And that also means that whenever I pull an item to craft, it would pull from the connected inventories. This one doesn't have anything in it. Um, so how exactly does all of this work? Well, you would attach a chest, a double chest here, then a double chest here, and it takes on a very interesting shape. Um, but uh, that is a very efficient way of kind of getting your early game going. Now, there's a couple of other mods after branching from this. This is probably like the bare bones solution is by utilizing this crafting station. Some other very interesting ones that I'm going to kind of gloss over a little bit uh, because I'm not going to be using them is going to be, for example, the storage lectern. Now, this is a very great early game solution and I have videos that cover how to set this up. But what's cool about this pack is once you have the storage lectern set up and you have your things linked to it from ours, by the way, you have to use like external storages like barrels and stuff and chests to connect to this. Uh, but once you have that set up, you actually don't have to use the enchanter's eye in this pack to wirelessly access it. Instead, there's an add-on that allows you to link directly with these indexes. So this is a part of ours additions and these warp indexes are pretty darn cool. Um, and you have one that is within the main dimension, also giving you a keybind and allowing you to store this, which is really, really nice as well. And this one is in world in the overworld. And then you have one that will work cross dimensionally, uh, but they do get quite expensive. And this is something I was keeping in mind for early game. I do not think this is super early game because you still have to, for this storage to gain access to at least a terminal, you have to go to the nether. Now that's of course, if you just want wireless access, because I know that you can definitely make the lectern without it. And the lectern on its own is a pretty early game thing. Now, another amazing sort of early game solution, which I've only really used like once or twice, but I will say that it is a very powerful early game solution is going to be the dimensional storage from occultism. So you just need to make the dimensional crystal matrix, which is this right here, requiring a book that is bound. And you're also going to need the ritual that is set up, which is the Sojourner's Higher Binding. Now, this can be a little bit hard to set up the actual ritual itself. You do not see it displayed here, but it is inside the occultism book. And I don't remember if this 100% requires nether outside of the quartz. So this one still, I think, is a uh, an, er an early game, but does require you to have gone at least to the nether to set up. Um, and it does take a little bit of time to craft these components uh, once you do start the rituals. But it, again, is actually a very nice thing. It actually has a tablet that works cross-dimensional as well. And now next on the list is a little bit further away. If you've done quite a bit of mining, you'll definitely have access to this. But in this particular pack, QIO has been made pretty accessible early game. Um, so you do need a mechanism set up for this. So I would call this like a kind of mix between pre-AE um, and or after AE. I don't know. It's a little bit in between. It's for mass storage and the QIO drives. Typically, these QIO drives would require uh, you to have a fission reactor set up, but these QIO drives do not. They require lead and you can make the first disks, uh, storing 16,000 items, and then these do have typing, so you can store up to 128 types, but you can fill the QIO drive array with these drives and access them with your QIO dashboard. Just something to keep in mind, but it does require quite a bit of resources to get started with these ultimate control circuits. Now, last but not least, in my opinion, one of the easiest and best sort of starting solutions, and also the most robust, is going to have to be integrated dynamics. Now wait, Chosen, isn't integrated dynamics just a way to send redstone signals after detecting certain things that happen in the game? You, you are correct, but with the add-ons, with the tunnels and the terminals mod, it actually becomes way, way, way more useful. And looking at all of this can be kind of confusing, 
and I'm going to do my best to explain how to get started here and also how to set up infrastructure super, super early that makes crafting all of this stuff absolutely effortless. Now, something to note about all of this, the resources you're really going to need to get started with this is going to be a couple of ender pearls. You're also going to need access to slime. That is kind of the harder thing to get in this. Um, and you're also going to need access to some redstone. And of course, we can't forget mineral trees. We are going to have to find mineral trees, or we can actually find an exclusive biome that is added from Integrated Dynamics, which is like a mineral biome. Now, what you're looking for when it comes to the trees to get started with this mod is this beautiful thing right here. So this is a mineral tree and is exactly what I'm looking for. And there's actually one right over there as well, but... We're in a bit of a sticky situation because of where this is located. I'm going to try my best to run over here and just mine it. But we do have a pillager outpost here that we do need to worry about. Now, these are going to break into two separate pieces, but we do want the entire tree to be broken down because this drops some very important materials. But the main thing I'm wanting is the logs. That is one of the most important things. Man, I've got my hands full. <laughs> these guys are... Are definitely after me but there we go i'll grab that and i need to get myself out of here now back at the little base we have i need to get myself a squeezer set up now the squeezer is very manual but i'm going to show you a pretty clever way of actually automating the squeezer which is going to make the progression of this so much smoother now i'm also going to need a drying basin to attach to the squeezer but outside of that like i was saying i feel like the biggest drawback early game of this mod is actually setting up your squeezer. Now, you don't have to do it for very long, but the actual amount of time that it takes early game is just enough, I think, to even prevent I from, for example, wanting to automate it. But I have a simple solution. So we just need to place our squeezer here, and we need to follow the path of this like drain line and get this connected like so. Beautiful. So now that we have this, we'll take a hopper and we'll place that underneath the drying basin, and then we can place a hopper going into the squeezer. And what this allows us to do is send items automatically into here. Now, the way that this actually functions is pretty cool. Um, if we are able to get on top of here and we jump on this, we'll see that this goes down and this is how that squeezing functionality would actually work. And what you would do is send it a redstone signal to pop it back up. So let's actually go ahead and get a block here. And if I give this a redstone signal, for example, with a torch, you can see it pops right back up. Now, there's actually a way that we can automate this, the actual pressing. And the way that we do that is very, very obscure. But I do want to show you, you are going to need a couple of armor stands. Um, so, two armor stands is the specific number that you're going to need. And that means a couple of sticks. But yes, just two armor stands is all you need. Um, and you need a way to get those armor stands placed in. So just a couple of wooden or stone blocks. I'm going to place this like here. By the way, one armor stand like so. And then, of course, you need one that goes up on top. So to be able to do that, you have to expand a little bit. And then we can place one right up here. And then you just drop the armor stand right on top of the other one. And now you have enough weight to fully press down on the squeezer. Now all we need to do is, well get a redstone signal that kind of loops. And really all you need to be able to do this is a simple redstone repeater. So what you're going to want to do is have your redstone torch attached to your squeezer just like so, place your redstone repeater facing into the block and set this to three ticks. And we are going to just repeat the signal. And what you end up with is a fully automated version of the squeezer. And then we just need to place our mineral logs in just like so, and this is 100% ready to go. We just need to leave it and forget about it, and this is going to automate the mineral that we are going to need for our future endeavors. Now keep in mind, this setup is super, super duper temporary. This is going to 100% be removed and replaced with two single blocks that just require power, and we should be able to also generate said power from this mod as well. And it's at this point you're going, Chosen, where's the storage at? Like this, this has nothing to do with actual storage. Uh, we're getting there. We just need to get the basic resources up and running first. Now this setup saves so much time. I tell you what, it's really hard to justify not doing this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get this cleared up. 
because once you get at least that little bit of mineral, you immediately want to take this and convert this into the actual machine blocks. Now, um, I do plan on taking the base here and building actually over here. I've got some plans, some, some pretty big plans actually, but I feel like getting at least this storage up and running is going to be our first major steps in getting enough resources for me to have the tools to be able to build like I want to build. Um, so I am slowly but surely building those things up. Now I've made up some batteries, which is very, very nice for this. And what I want to do is craft, for example, a generator. Let's see, I should be able to see the recipe for that. There we go. There's one generator. I actually want two, uh, one for each of these, and then we'll make the mechanical squeezer very straightforward. And then we'll also make the mechanical drying basin pretty darn cool. Now these on their own have their own uses, right? You can use this for some pretty awesome stuff, um, including, I believe, turning lava into magma, but we can also, I think, generate lava with blaze. So, yes, like lava can be automated and also with netherrack, it looks like, with power and time, but definitely blaze powder is a good way to generate lava. All right now, I'm just going to get them placed down like this, and you can place your squeezer right next to your mechanical drying basin, and you can actually set the auto eject to be set to true. By the way, control O allows you to toggle on your uh, your EMI, um, which is pretty nice. So uh, we're just gonna get some coal in here. I think that's going to be pretty straightforward. Put some coal, get some power started, and these generators are okay. They're gonna be enough power to at least get these uh, buffers filled up. And this will now process quite quickly. You can see that processed here. And it also filled the uh, the fluid and then also generated the crystal. So now for the fun part and actually crafting up our storage terminal, which is what's going to allow us to access storages that are connected to the network. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the item interface and how we connect all of those things together. But one of the main things that's needed in here that's a little bit obscure is the mineral glass. The way we get that is placing the glass in here and then we just put a single log in. And what should happen is the mineral fills up and the glass then gets coated and we now have ourselves mineral glass. And there we go. Beautiful. Now this is the part where you're going to need some glowstone and thankfully I showed you a way to easily get glowstone and that is through the dungeon crawl mod. So definitely find yourself a dungeon and you're also going to need some of the slime balls which you also get from the dungeon crawl mod. So everything you get from that mod from last episode allows you to create this network. So once all the basics are crafted up, we now have a storage terminal. But we can't do anything with the storage terminal until we actually connect a storage up to it by using an uh, an item interface. And something to note, item interfaces are incredibly cheap and you can hook up as many inventories as you want through these networks. So you just link things with logic cables and you just attach an item interface onto the storages that you want the items to show up in in our storage terminal. Now, in my case, I'm actually going to want to use just one to connect into it. And this is going to be pretty cool because I want to use this in correlation with sophisticated storage. And to do this, I'm going to be making a storage controller. Now, I did get 16 quartz via our quest, which was pretty nice as a quest reward. But you would probably have to go to the nether in order to make these comparators. Um, I don't know if there is a loot roll. It does look like they can roll in loot chests. So you may be able to actually find this um, before going to this dimension. But I don't know. These, uh, these are in, what is it, small blip redstone chamber loot chests, so when dungeon arrives. So you can find these in the big when dungeon arrives ships, possibly. I bet they're in the ships. But the storage controller is not what actually requires ender pearls. What's going to require an ender pearl is the storage link tool. So this is the storage tool that allows us to connect the storage controller up and allow us to link all of our um, sophisticated storage drawers to one central location. Now to make a sophisticated storage anything, you just simply apply some redstone torches to it and it gives it a little bit more functionality. And we now have, I think, everything needed to make our controller from sophisticated. Without further ado, voila, we now have the storage controller. And I'm also gonna go ahead and get my storage tool. So I'm gonna end up making several barrels, I think, but I need to figure out now, where am I going to start placing things? So now originally I was like, you know what? This area would be the great place to build, but I was thinking whenever I seen this massive island that was next to it, I was like, you know what? This is the perfect arch to have something hanging down below and then use this middle section as like the main section of the base 
and then we can build stuff on top as well. And there's this amazing viewing platform over here, just perfect for this. Um, so I do want to go ahead and mine out the center, which I think is going to be a great place to have our storage for right now. And the cool part about this is we can use this storage connection later on if we get into applied or not if, but when, whenever we get into a AE. Um, so something we can do is we can set our vein miner to a three by three square. And this actually allows me to use this as if it's a hammer, which is a beautiful thing. And I just want to get this whole area kind of hollowed out with the center point being right here. And I've already marked out the center of this area. So now after a little bit of kind of clearing out by hand, I think now we might as well put this interesting book to use that we found called Fireball. And I think this is gonna be perfect for this actual scenario because it acts as TNT essentially. And what it's gonna do is it's going to allow for some randomization, which I really love. Now it is a very mana hungry spell, but our mana regen's pretty quick, and we could use a mana regeneration potion, which I think we have a couple laying around. Now, after a little bit of exploding, this place is really starting to look nice, have that organic feel that I really wanted, um, all from that fireball, essentially giving me some TNT. I also went ahead and uh, placed in some moss blocks down here, and this allows me to grow some moss, which looks really good, especially on these edges over here. I'm able to expand this, get some flowers growing up, and I think that looks pretty decent right here in these, like, uh, you know, random areas. Now, I'm sure at this point you're wondering, Chosen, but, but what about the storage? Like, what are you going to do for storage? And good point. Um, We've got to figure that one out. Now, with all of this stuff in place, I went ahead and got my barrels placed in the center here. And I just want to use this as an example, too, to show kind of the range. Now, this can reach about 16 blocks out, give or take. Um, I think it's like right at the 16th block. So it has a bit of range and should be able to reach all of these blocks as you see them here. Now I am going to need a good way of getting up to these blocks. So for right now, I'm just going to bridge up. And this should allow me to hopefully reach most of these blocks. Of course, this is how I actually place them in. Uh, but I'm going to have to remember when I start to link these. So um, I believe I can shift right click. That sets my controller. And then if I go up here... I can actually just start to link these. So shift right click, and you can now see the lasers connecting to these. And I'm essentially connecting all of these inventories to that one controller location. Pretty darn cool. And that means we should be able to access all of the items that are inside of these barrels we should be able to now see them inside of the storage, just like that. And now that I have all of these barrels connected, the way that I can actually connect my storage terminal is going to be by placing the item interface connected directly to this, and we don't even have to modify anything about this interface. It should be just ready to go as is. We'll place a logic cable on top just like that, and then we can just place a terminal like this on top or on the side or what have you, any way you kind of want. I think uh, for this, I'll just place it just like that. And when I open this up, I should now have access to all of the inventories. And we can change the size of this. I typically don't like the grid size to be huge like that because it kind of interferes here. Uh, but I do like the grid to be just about this size, so about the large. But we can see the items in here. We can see our crafting grid. And we can also interact with the EMI or JEI. And now for the hard part, just transferring our items from our inventories over there over to here. And you can see they just effortlessly go in just like so. And then we should be able to see all of those items in our storages, which are now contained within these barrels. Now, the real power in all of this is how much storage these barrels can actually have. And at this given point, we don't have a whole lot of storage, but it's easily expandable. So if I jump into Sophisticated here and I look at our upgrades, we can actually upgrade this barrel from a Sophisticated one directly to an Iron or a Gold or Diamond. Um, and Diamond is pretty large when it comes to setting this up. So let me go ahead and for right now, let's just make a, a, a few of these, right? Like um, right now we have 16 barrels, so technically we could do 16, but I don't have enough Iron yet. We're going to solve that problem very soon though. Uh, but 
I can make like definitely a couple of these. So let's do like four possibly. And let's also upgrade them to gold since we have quite a bit of gold. And just by upgrading this one storage, we can take a look at this. This storage is going to go from just a single chest worth of storage. And if I shift right click on this, this has now jumped to one, two, three chests worth of storage all in one block space. And now that's just the start because we can also now after upgrading these, we can actually put stack upgrades in here. So these can actually hold multiple stacks of a singular item. But of course, that is going to be something that we do later because I just don't have the resources for it right now. But like I said, that is going to be changing very, very soon because next episode, I definitely want to go to the nether and that should unlock a new mod for us. Technically, we have it available right now, but the actual functionality, I think, really starts for the Dyer's mod. Well, after we go to the nether and believe me, I cannot wait to get into the Just Dyer's Things mod. I mean, like I said, we are going to need to get access to this, uh, this blaze goo first, but that is going to require us, like I said, to get some blaze, get ourselves some nether wart and also kill some wither skeletons. And now that I have all of this extra storage, exploring is going to feel so much better because I'm not going to be worried anymore about getting back home and needing to sort my inventory. Now there's still one more thing left to do that I want to get set up on this network. And that is the wireless access to this network. Um, now, typically you would have to go to the end to be able to do this, but there's actually a method built into this mod that allows us to use ender pearls instead to try and sort of chance our way through uh, to bypass that part. Now for this, we are going to need a little bit more glowstone and something I wanted to mention underneath these, <laughs> these pillars here in the villages do contain some extra glowstone just in case you were actually lacking just like I was. You can always grab it if you found a waystone in a village. So for this, I still need a storage terminal, which is another one of them, why I needed that glowstone. But I'm also going to need something special to be able to link this together. So we have the portable storage terminal, but this requires something else. It requires an omnidirectional connector. And that's where the logic director actually comes into play, which is a material we are going to need, which is a more advanced material in this mod. So the omnidirectional connector technically is a way to wirelessly link two networks together um, from the integrated dynamics mod. Uh, but we only really need one to be able to get this linked up, but we still need the two logic detectors. And this is going to require crystallized chorus chunk. Everything else is easy to get. This is where we have to make something special. Now we can do this with pop chorus fruit, or you can go the more expensive route, which is what we're going to do early on and hope we get super lucky here with getting our crystallized chunks. And uh, to be able to do this, we are going to need to use ender pearls, a couple of them. So we technically need six. And if we can get lucky, we might be able to get away with only making three of these. But like I said, it's literally just a chance. So let's see. We did not get lucky there, there or there. So unfortunately, we do not have enough, and I might actually have to go Enderman hunting. Yeah, I'm 100% going to need to do that, because I did not get lucky here. But we do have 500, so we're, like, really close um, on this. I think we would need to make, let's see, uh, we'd have to do that the exact same amount of time to get a full bucket of this, and then we have a crystal of it, but... Yeah, I'm going to have to go Enderman hunting for sure. Now, a quick way that we can actually set it to nighttime is by using the comforts mod. Uh, the hammock is a pretty cool little device. So you place a corner here. You need uh, two blocks in between and then another corner block. And then you hook up your hammock. And well, you can sleep your daytime's troubles away. And yes, this will prompt nighttime. So it's a way to skip tonight. And of course, a bed or a sleeping bag is a way to skip today pretty darn cool now a quick way to of course get ender pearls is to just go to the nether and barter and do some gold trading uh but i kind of want to save that for next episode so i'm going to be working on it this way oh and i should definitely kill those guys as well come on oh man but yes the old-fashioned way Thankfully, we have this ham, which makes it kind of ridiculous. These guys I want to take out. By the way, you don't get bad omen anymore, which is very, very nice. You get the bottle instead. That's a vanilla change. There we go. And we technically need four enderpearls. 
Like once we have four ender pearls, we are good to go. Ooh, now these are cool because these are special endermen right here. Definitely worth taking them out. I think they even have custom drops. Like they can totally drop something special. Oh, that one, that one died over here. Did I get anything from it? Oh no, it wasn't a player kill or it could have just not dropped anything, but we do have another one. Yes, come on. I think they can drop that robe they're wearing, which is pretty darn cool. Oh, I probably should remove the fire that this is applying to them. It's making it very bouncy. Oh, there we go. Oh no. <laughs> this is crazy. Ooh, and after killing another one, I ended up getting the robe, the Savannah hood, not robe. Oh man, it allows you to look like an Enderman without angering them. Wait, you can just look at the Enderman? Oh, that's pretty cool. So beautiful, after taking out a couple in a couple more Endermen. There we go, we have the four that we need. Now, there is also a chance that we don't get anything as a result of this, but um, we should at least get the fluid maxed out. And after depositing it, there we go. We now have the six needed in order to proceed. Oh, this is actually fantastic. Okay. So I can go ahead and deposit this stuff. We ended up getting some grass blocks too, which is kind of nice. But yeah, just we need the terminal. And we should be able to now craft the logic director. And then we can turn this into the omni directional. I'm going to need a few of these other ingredients like the mono and all of that stuff. Without further ado, we now have our omni directional connector. Um, so I think the only thing I need to do now is apply this to the network here just by placing that here. And I think we just shift right click it. And at this point, now it is connected. That is beautiful. And we should be able to access this, I believe, cross dimensional, given that this remains chunk loaded. And I should be able to chunk load by opening up my map and in the top left hand corner, the claim chunks button. And then I can select an area by right clicking and then shift and hold and drag, and then this will force chunk load this area. And so now with this, I have access to my terminal from anywhere, all of my storage at my fingertips, ready to go at a moment's notice. Now, speaking of a moment's notice, something else you may want to know how to do is the fact that you can set a key bind to the storage terminal in your inventory. So I have mine set to tab. And so all you have to do is search up integrated terminals and set the open first terminal inside of the keybind. And whenever you do that, you can have it in your inventory and you can open up your terminal. So no need to, to flood up your hotbar. You can just keep it inside of your main part of your inventory, hit the tab or whatever key you assign it to and have access to your terminal. Oh, it's so good. And speaking of so good, it would be so good if you would click that subscribe button because that is going to be it for today's episode. And also give this video guys a huge thumbs up. I hope you did enjoy and hopefully you learned something new. And of course, guys, with that being said, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to... Nova Stars, thank you so much for becoming a Discord supporter and of course supporting me in one of the best ways possible. And guys, if you're looking forward to joining the Discord as well, be sure to check it out, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the amazing crew today. Also check me out over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect, where you can find me live streaming about three days a week and I would love for you to follow me over there as well. Thank you all so very much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.